Hello and welcome to Lansing Update. I'm your host, Megan O'Brien. We are here with Senator Jack Brandenburg. Thanks for being here today. Megan, thanks for having me. Thank you. Well, we have some important topics to talk about. Yes, um, we do. Yes. Let's start off with the Michigan sales tax increase for transportation. You want to talk about that? Yes. I, 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 don't, I don't think the people who are watching are going to like, like what I have to say, but I would, I, would, I would like to ask everybody who is watching to mark their calendars for May 5th, 2015. That is the day of the special election uh, ballot proposal that will increase taxes by $1.7 billion, and that's a very accurate figure. This is to repair road. This was meant to be to repair roads, but in that $1.7 billion, they have $300 million for education. They have <clears throat> $112 million for rail transit. They have $95 million for local governments. And they have 90, uh, uh, a tax cut for the working poor. Mm -hmm. but all, all in all, it adds up to $1.7 billion, but only $1.2 billion of it will go to road repair. I think these other items like education, rail transit, local governments, and whatnot, should be discussed on their own merit individually. Why did... Who, who decided to put all of these things into one bundle? On the last day of the legislative session, the majority leader of the Senate, the minority leader of the, uh, of the Senate, the governor, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, and the minority leader in the, in, in the House of Representatives mm -hmm. came up with this plan and presented it to, to the membership. Uh, as I said, on the last day of the legislative session, and basically, they got it jammed through. But I, I really want to emphasize that Come May 5th, come out to vote because I, I don't, I, I, I will be voting. I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell people how to vote. That's their business. But since I represent them, I'll, I, I will say publicly how I'm going to vote. I'm going to vote no. I voted no on the Senate floor. I'm going to vote no on May 5th. Um, why did you vote no? Is there too much going on? Do you feel like the roads won't get the funding they need? First of all, I don't, I don't believe the, the uh, I don't, I don't believe that the administration has done its due diligence in regards to looking for money inside the budget and cutting inside the budget uh, to get money for roads. Uh, I don't think throwing a tax on people is fair unless you, unless you exhaust every means inside the budget to bring the money out for road repair. Mm -hmm. Another. Uh, another issue is this, is, is something called Public Act 51, mm -hmm. which was <clears throat> enacted in 1951, it's 63 years old, and it, it is our chief funding mechanism for road repair. And why I don't like it is, is well, for several reasons, but I'll, I'll give you one, is PA 51 measures the amount, the total amount of county road a county has. But it does not take into one consideration the amount of lane miles that county has. A, a, a two-lane county road in Tuscola County mm -hmm. will get as much funding as a five-lane county road running through Macomb. We have, to, we have to rewrite Public Act 51. I've said that for two years now. And, and, and until we do, I don't think our roads will ever be, ever be right. That doesn't really seem feasible to give them the same amount if we have if there's certain counties that ha have more roads. Absolutely, mm -hmm. I mean it 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 it's, it, it's, it, it, it strongly favors P Public Act 51 strongly favors right now the rural counties, the urban county it, uh, the urban counties are not are, are not getting our fair share. Every time we we get into a conversation about this, they know that they know that we don't, they have us outvoted outgunned, but we have all the population, we have all the businesses, we have all the trucks. Mm -hmm. So And all the wear and tear. All the wear and tear. Mm -hmm. And so in this legislation there is also um, money that will go towards schools. It's 300 million. What will happen if they don't get that? What will happen? They still have 13 billion to operate on. You know, public education, I've said this before, is very ad adequately funded mm -hmm. in our budget, 
Public education accounts for 31 percent of our total budget. Um, it represents almost 13 billion dollars a year. Uh, basically, how this deal all came about was the Democrats demanded 300 million dollars for uh, education because they did not they did not like the one percent increase in sales tax. So basically, this came this whole deal became a Christmas tree. Everything was being hung on it. So nice. you have 1.2 for 1.2 for roads, 300 for education, public uh, public rail and transit uh, in it, mm -hmm. local lo local units of government for 95 million. Take take these take these issues, as I said, one at a time, vet them out, and make a decision on it. All you have to do with the 1.2 billion dollars is start looking inside your budget. You might not find find 1.2 billion, but you can find 600 million, mm -hmm. 700 million, to get the projects going. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Do you think this should have been required to go to voters? Do you think Snyder? I think you just answered it, but do you think they could have found a better way to separate all of these? Anytime you change the concept, what what I, I think a lot of people don't realize that. Anytime you change the Constitution, and our sales tax is part of our Constitution, mm -hmm. you have to go to the voters. So to, to get that 1%, you have to change the, change the Constitution. That has to be approved by the voters. So they weren't just saying, oh, we're, you know, we'd like to make a decision, but we're not sure, so let's give it to the voters. That's not how it went. It was they had to. Yes. Okay. Okay. But but the 1.2 billion dollars is the only part that has to go to the voters. The other part does not have to go to the voters. You know, we can decide that mm -hmm. individually. Mm -hmm. And honestly, though, it has it has been a while since they they've worked on the road infrastructure. Um, I think I heard it's been s since 1997. Is that right? Well, in, in 1997, the Michigan legislature enacted the 19 cent per gallon gas tax. The only trouble is, in 1997, they did not put an indexer for inflation in that bill. We still pay 19 cents a gallon uh, gas, mm -hmm. I mean, um, 19 cents a gallon tax on gasoline. Yeah. It's not the same 19 cents a gallon it was in 1997. But it is what it is. Mm -hmm. So, but we still generate we still generate eight hundred and twenty million dollars a year from that gas tax. But one one other thing will happen be, because of this of this vote, we will we, we we will discontinue the nineteen cents per gallon, and we will take it to a tax on on, on a wholesale price of, uh, of gasoline, and we'll take it to fourteen point nine percent translates into 42 cents a gallon. It, it more than doubles the 19 cents. So I, that's why I'm voting no. Mm -hmm. And what would you like to see done with the roads? What else would you like? You know, if, 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 if I was the person calling the shots, if I was the governor, here's what I'd do. I'd go into the general fund and I'd pull out $500 million. And I would build a strip of road somewhere that is a, that is in a is a busy part of the state. I'd build it right to the specs where it would be a world class road. Okay. I would say to the people then, look, drive this road. Do you like this road? Do you want these types of roads all over the state? That hasn't been done. I think I think that you have to show people what they are what they are paying for mm -hmm. and I think they would be much more receptive to maybe a tax whatnot look how good it can be sure look what we can do with your money it's it's going to good use mm-hmm yeah yes mm -hmm. would you um, ever play with the idea of maybe having tolls like other areas 
tools, tools, tools work and then they don't work. Mm -hmm. um, there are privacy issues, um, computerized tolling. Computerized tolling has its good points and its bad points. The bad points is that they have credit card information on file. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not too keen on that. Uh, I don't think Michigan can have toll roads due to the fact that they took road funding money way, way back in the day, and they were given a choice, take this lump sum of money, but you, we, we, will, we will own the, the land where the road is, is built. Mm -hmm. And Michigan took that course. They took more money. So I don't think Michigan can, I don't really believe Michigan can have toll roads okay. constitutionally. Okay. But so May 5th, it's an important day. May 5th, May 5th, uh, I'd like to see a good percentage of the voters of my entire district come out and vote. Just come out and vote. Mm -hmm. And I will, be, I, I will be sending a letter out with the ballot language and explaining what will happen mm -hmm. if you vote yes or no. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Um, another topic that I would like to talk about, um, and probably a lot of Shelby Township residents have been well versed on, um, is some oil drilling and oil exploration. You want mm -hmm. to talk about that? What's been going on with that? Okay. Uh, it's kind of a long story, mm -hmm. but I'm going to start right at the very beginning. Okay. On March 27th, I believe, um, West Bay oil expo uh, exploration and a man by the name of Lechurco mm -hmm. signed a contract for a piece of land up here in northwest Shelby Township. On, uh, on May 5th, West Bay applied for a drilling permit to the DEQ. On, be, be, between May 5th and May 15th, that, that permit was okayed by the Department of, Department of Environmental Quality. Right around July 20th, drilling began. I did, not, I did not know the drilling until July 27th. I knew nothing about anything about oil drilling. When I went up there, I was absolutely appalled. Those people are very, very upset. People just don't, do not deserve that. I immediately got with the, with the, the, the head of the DEQ and the governor's office to, to see what could be done. It just so happens that the, that the director of the DEQ and the governor strongly favor, but this is hard to believe, but it's the truth, they strongly favor drilling in densely populated areas. For what reason, I don't know. Well, it, 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 caused, it caused a lot of angst with a lot of people, and I don't blame them. We had, we had 10 meetings from, the, from August 1st through the middle of October to come up with a best practices policy. What, what, what emerged was the best that, that I, could, I and Pete Lund could, could come up with. There was 15 other people in these meetings besides Pete Lund and myself. Mm -hmm. um, I ran two bills. I ran Senate Bill 1026, which basically said oil companies have to employ these best practices standards. Mm -hmm. Senate Bill 1076 said that in, the, uh, in, 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 in townships over 70,000 people, they would have the same regulatory rights as cities do. Five, just five townships out of 1,242. Both bills were defeated badly in the Senate. It, what it boils down to is that the people, pe people who are serving do not, con do not become concerned with these types, types, types of issues until they're right in their own backyard. It's called not in my backyard. It's called NIMBY for short. Mm -hmm. But my heart goes out to these people. It, it really does. Uh, but we're at a, at, a, at a standstill right now. Um, we'll do everything we can to get the law changed. We, we, we certainly haven't given up the fight, but right now it doesn't look good. 
What was your reaction when you saw how close that um, exploratory drill was to those ha that neighborhood up at 25 and Dequinder? Did you see how close that was? Yes. Uh, when, 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 I, when I walked up onto the site and, and, and looked at that, I got a very ill feeling in my stomach, yeah. almost nauseous. I mean, I, I was that mad. Uh, you, you just, you, you have to use a little common sense. And I would say to West Bay, you know, how, how, how can you do this? And mi, mi, Mr. Lechurko, mm -hmm. whoever you are, I haven't had the pleasure to meet you, but you built all those homes up there and you made a lot of money up there. How much money do you have to make? Mm -hmm. You know, I really, I really feel for these people. And so there was also a moratorium. I believe they put a six-month moratorium and then a three-month extended moratorium on it. Mm -hmm. um, what are some things that stop the moratorium? The drilling, the noise? The I, think, I think what will, uh, not being an attorney, but I, I, I think what, we'll have to, what, what, what Shelby is going to have to, the, the township is going to have to contend with is West Bay's attorneys will go into court and basically say that moratoriums uh, cannot, cannot, trump, cannot trump a written contract. They didn't, I hate, I hate to give these guys any breaks, but they didn't, they didn't break the law in any way, shape, or form. Um, but that's, I, I, I think that's how it's going to play out. Mm -hmm. What we should hope for, what we should really hope for is if they do come back, when they do come back, that they don't find, find oil. That's true, yeah. You know. Yeah, because, you know, I understand West Bay is a business. They want to make money. They, wanna, they have to make their money somehow. But you don't want the, these types of things in, in a residential neighborhood. And for the life of me, Senate Bill 1076 only affected five townships in the entire state. But these are the most densely populated townships. Why couldn't you just, okay, the DEQ and the governor came out and said, hey, if, one zero, if, 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 if Senate Bill 1076 comes to my desk, I'm going to veto it. That is why I was beaten so badly. Mm -hmm. you know, I, really thought, I really thought the Democrats would side with me. It would have made it much, much closer, but they didn't. So I, I, I really didn't. And a lot of Repu don't get me wrong, a lot of Republicans didn't either. Really? I, think I, only got, I, I think I got 10 votes. Okay. You need 20 in the Senate to get it passed. Okay. And again, in all honesty, they, West Bay did follow the rules. They, yeah, did, they did do it accordingly like they were supposed to. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just scary to see this, you know, exploratory drilling so close to a front door. Sure it is. Yeah. I mean, and, and two, uh, when, these, when these people who voted against it, when, when it comes their turn to um, have to deal with an oil company and, and, and whatnot, well, I'm, I'm going to say to them, now you know how it feels. Mm -hmm. And you had mentioned, you and both Pete Lund, mm -hmm. you, you worked a lot, a lot of hours went into preparation. and. Yes, we did. You know, we, we went through 10, 10 meetings that were over three hours long. Um, we argued, we bargained. Uh, it's, it, we, we were fighting an uphill battle because the, the director and the governor wanted it this way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, they call it democracy. Yeah. So outcome in the long run, what do you see happening with that? What I see happening is they'll come back in to see if they have oil for sure, I think. Okay. I hope they don't find it. If they find it, they'll, they'll definitely, they'll, they'll, there will be an oil well up there unless uh, attorneys can find some way to get around it. Um, I hope for the sake of Shelby Township residents that it will be a, like a one and done affair. Mm -hmm. That'd be good. But I, I, I want the people of Shelby to know because we've re I have received some pretty negative emails so, so had Pete Lund, 
Pete Lund and I did everything we could, everything within our power to fight this back. I never knew about this until July 27th, and I'll maintain to this day mm -hmm. uh, that if I would have if I would have been informed of this some sometime in May, I think I could have got something done. Mm -hmm. Once that I didn't find out until after the after the rig was going into the ground. So that's that's for another story. Mm -hmm. That's a that was a big surprise. A big surprise. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, um, those were two really big topics that I wanted to touch on. Okay. And um, there was another one that uh, us animal lovers like to talk about. Okay. You're an animal lover I as am. well. Um, there was a bill, and I think they put it on hold for now to look take into more consideration, but there was a bill to um, stiffen animal cruelty. Uh, can you tell me about that? Yes. Right now, right now, if, uh, if you were convicted of animal cru cruelty or killing an animal, torturing an animal, whatever, you were, you were given four years in prison. Um, this this le legislation makes it 10 years in prison. Uh, I will support it, but there, there, is, there is part of this, this legislation that, that says that you have to torture nine or more cats and, and dogs and whatnot, and that that language has to go out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I it 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 basically, if you torture an animal, one animal should be the criteria, mm -hmm. not nine. Yes, and also this extends it out to breeders and um, let's see, breeders and also um, pet shop owners. Yes, because sometimes when a breeder you know, if they have two mama puppies and then they have 10 and then things get messy and animals start getting hurt. Mm -hmm. So now this would extend out to them. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and I am an animal lover. Mm -hmm. I was born and raised with dogs. We have, we, we, we have cats and a dog at, at, at my home and uh, they're part of the family. Mm -hmm. So. Excellent. And so hopefully the language can change on this and I, get it passed. I think it will be changed next week. I really do. We were supposed to vote on this, and then it got blown up. And I think the reason, the, the reason it was blown up was because of the intent language. Mm -hmm. But I think it will go. That's good. That's good. Absolutely. Because they, you know, they don't have a voice. And so you know, if somebody hurts them, they can't say, this person did it. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. And it's, it, it's really... A tragic situation. I think. I think people who torture people, animals, or do violence upon other people, are just sick individuals. Mm -hmm. You know, who 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 would want to torture a dog? I know. Really? Yeah. So. Yeah, we got to speak for the animals, right? <laughs> <laughs> sure. And another um, quick topic. Um, there was medical marijuana dispensaries. Um, you want to tell me about that? That one. Medical marijuana has been bou bou bouncing around. Uh, for years now, um, the, the the whole thing with medical marijuana is how strongly are you going to regulate it? Mm -hmm. I don't want I don't want marijuana being sold out of motel rooms or drug stores or five and dime shops. Uh, I, I and I and until I'm satisfied with the regulation of it, I'm I'm not going to vote for it. Uh, I've I've not had that many calls on medical marijuana, mm -hmm. but I have read of examples where the vote of the people was badly abused mm -hmm. uh, over, over the years. So, because you know. all you want is you want to make sure it's done safely and everybody's safe. People yes. are safe while they're doing that. That's the way I want it. Excellent. Definitely. Yes. Okay. Well, there were some really good topics for this show. I think so. Yes, I All appreciate right. it. Thanks for stopping by. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Okay, we'll see you soon. Okay. Thanks, and thanks for watching Lansing Update.